So, okay, it seems to be a done deal. Joe Biden is going to be the next president of the United States. Sam, what are your thoughts? It was interesting election. I don't think I had ever waited this long for a result to come in. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm ha- in a way I'm happy he won. Uh, in at least as a Iranian, there may be better policies towards uh, Iran and Middle East. But overall, what a shitty election, you know, in terms of no substance, no nothing, and two really two of the worst candidates ever. Not the worst, uh, at least in case of Biden, but two of the worst, genuinely. And two, definitely, I think, two worst campaigns I've ever witnessed. Uh, and they, they finished. And I think f- f- after this, I'm completely done with uh, polling uh, <laughs> companies. At least unless they, I go through the details of exactly how they change their methodology. Because I, do, uh, I mean, uh, I think yeah. we should discuss the results. It's very interesting. It's very interesting. What was your reaction? But first of all, what any any feelings when you heard the great news? Did no. you feel like going dancing in the streets like so many have? <laughs> no, but wow, the weather seems to be amazing <laughs> in yeah. New York and the East Coast right now in the states. But no, honestly, I'm just I wasn't even excited from day one. I mean, I, the first day when it was happening, I realized how much more excited I was during the primaries when it looked like. Bernie Sanders had a chance. One thing that I'm very interested in, but I haven't had time, and maybe all the information is not out yet, and that is I really want to see who voted for who. Because a few things have happened that I think will go counter some of the usual things that we talk about. One is that more Americans voted this time. So, you know, it is, they sometimes say, oh, half of the people who are eligible to vote don't vote. So I want to see exactly what is the percentage of those who haven't voted this time. Uh, Another thing is when it comes to the polls, I've been thinking about this a lot too. I don't think they're completely useless, but if the best that they do is, you know, best case scenario, show you some tight races and worst case, they might get it really wrong. I think they really have to start getting mixed with other indicators of what's going on. Maybe you need to have a better understanding of that state of the people, of the issues going on. Because I realized whenever we talked about the polls, we never even put them in a bigger context. So we just or like try to help it out with some other information. We just assume that this was enough. So this was kind of a few well, things that have been going through my head. No, no, but I'm just a scientific poll supposed to I take into account all those, like it's supposed to be, the best one supposed to be a combination of like a survey and perhaps yeah. interviews and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, I suppose it depends on the poll. I don't want to be... Yeah. And that's why this one poll that we did, and we went over it with in the other video that we did, but this Texas poll that we did from the university, yeah, the one not- where they talked about the people who had voted and who hadn't voted when they separated the methodology that way, then their then their response was much more accurate. Their findings. Yeah, you're, no, you're right. Uh, I, it's just. Yeah, but hundred percent, I, mean, I agree. Yeah, but I'm. I'm. I am. I just. It shows you some people really want to party, even though there is Corona, even though yeah. Biden is the least excitable candidate in the whole universe. They managed to go to the streets and party. I was very surprised of that. But so would but, you say that the whole election at the end did come out to Trump or no Trump? Um, I think so. In America, yeah, I think in the minds of the voters, that's what it came down to. And... I suppose the campaigns were very much designed in that way. At least the Democratic campaign was designed in an anti-Trump way. I would say increasingly the Republican campaign also became a practice in like we are, you know, like, uh, what do you say, like pro-tyrant, uh, <laughs> pro-tyrant propaganda. Uh, like they are, they are even now, I think, increasingly becoming a party of Trump or a, perhaps some put in other future demagogue, you know, mm-hmm. they are uh, even in, during George Bush times, they used to say you don't criticize a wartime president, you know, because they, they tend to, yeah, they tend to be quite good little soldiers of the little emperors up there in the Republican Party. So, yeah, I do think it came down to Trump and no Trump. So, yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, well, let's. 
I mean, interestingly, just to get into the re- result was that uh, we said when we talked, I think in the podcast, it was in the video, we said that um, we don't think Pennsylvania going to flip, but Pennsylvania flipped. Georgia flipped. So what's the final? Do you have the final count of Pennsylvania by any chance? Uh, Biden is at 49.7%. Trump has at 49.1%. So it's a less than 1% difference. So he can, uh, uh, he could trigger a, uh, a recount, basically. Yeah, that one, that, that one really looked like it was going his way. Yeah, and in, in Georgia, mm-hmm. uh, their difference is 02 uh, percent. That's yeah. quite sorry. To uh, Biden, two million four hundred sixty-five thousand five hundred votes. Trump, two million four hundred fifty-five thousand three hundred and five votes. Crazy, very yeah. crazy. And uh, yeah, that that was great. And this was something probably people have heard about that the Biden is now a person with most amount of votes. Uh, with is a presidential candidate with the most amount of votes in American history mm-hmm. with 75 million 199,800 votes that's and crazy this, yeah he's the like he got more votes than Trump uh, than Trump first term than uh, Obama all of that but interestingly the the presidential candidate with the second most amount of votes is Donald Trump with 70 million eight. 800,000. So this is what I'm saying. 676,000 votes, basically. So basically, uh, yeah, he with that amount of votes, Trump could have beaten all previous presidents yeah. in election. Yeah. So this is what it, I'm thinking, you know. Maybe there are more Americans who side with the Democrats and the Republicans than we tend to think. Oh. Because um... you know why I say this, right? Because it's common among... In leftist circles, it's always like, oh, because, you know, they, these guys win because most of the Americans don't vote. But, yeah, yeah. So oh, now it they, seems they, like I'm just trying to calculate the percent. I think we'll have to wait until our next video. No, but I, I think this is going to have, uh, what do you say? This is going to have a participation rate above 70%, probably, yeah. but 72, something like that. But I still, uh, I mean, uh, usually American elections have, about 50 to 60 percent participation rate but i think they would say that there is a lack of choice in the elections people are you know they, there are many excuses yeah but i but i do agree with you that in general american people are not particular like not american people, most people conservatism is quite popular around the world in many different countries yeah conservatism nationalism all that kind of stuff so yeah, I'm not. Yeah, you're right. Though. We there is this super positive representation of the people, whatever that is, that they are always agreeing with the most positive interpretation that leftists have. But no, yeah, it's, yeah, that's not true necessarily.